Hey guys, thanks for following along. Usually I'm building aircraft. This time we're building a wild pool. It sits on the top floor of a house, 24 feet deep in the water. A floor moves up and down in the pool and literally can come out of the water to turn it into a dance floor or just a couple feet deep if I got little kids in the pool. We have windows that see through into the pool. We got some crazy engineering with concrete that spans clear out over the backyard sitting on a single column. The pool actually sits over a garage. So we're gonna show you how we engineer so cars can drive under the pool. There's a lot of crazy things we got to do. Big craning, big rebar, big construction, and a ton of engineering. This is in Utah. It's gonna be able to freeze. And so I need this system to auto winterize. So I'm gonna show you some big underground water vaults that drain all the pipes every time a pump turns off, either from me or from a power outage so that this pool can be run 365 days a year. We're doing radiant floor heating, all kinds of fun things, some waterfalls, wet walls. Follow along, I hope you like this. You know, I love engineering, I hope you like this. As soon as we get this house done, we're gonna get back to building a few airplanes. I'm actually building airplanes while building the house, so I hope you follow along all of it. Catch up on the old stuff, follow the new. We love you guys, back to work. It's physics, math, and engineering. Machine it, draft it, build it, test it, break it. Every time something new gets built, the entire world advances. Laying in bed at night, it's designing new parts, designing new suspension, designing new wings. Okay, it's the end of a perfect day. It was raining on and off most of the day, but the temperature's not too bad. Um, gotta show you what is going underneath the concrete. You can see these lines right here are part of the radiant heat, but they don't look like radiant heat pipes because they're actually just sleeves, electrical conduit, to get radiant heat out to the staircase that is a big concrete spiral staircase that chases the radius of the outside of the pool. A common mistake made with radiant heat, and I see it a lot of times in driveways, where people try and get too far of a run to go heat something, even if they've got it running alongside other radiant heat pipes. If I did a distance this long, which is nearly 80 feet, and then wanted to heat the stairs, I would lose all the heat to this concrete before I got to my staircase. So what I've done is I've made a sleeve, so I've got a large pipe. The radiant pipe will slide right inside of it, and since the diameter is different, it will only make contact at one point because the radiuses won't blend together. They'll just barely touch on edge. So you have a hot pipe with an air gap to another piece of plastic which acts as a insulator and that allows the hot liquid glycol to stay unobstructed almost 100% all the way out to the staircase. So those are just sleeves for radiant heat. After I put the next layer of rebar, which will be an eight inch by eight inch number four bar over the entire patio here. They'll go over top of this. Then I'll put the radiant on it. Then we'll pour the concrete. We've got a lot more to do tomorrow. So we're getting close, probably three or four more days. And we're gonna pour another several trucks of concrete up here, which I'm really excited about because once that goes up, this beam will make sense because I will get to build all the walls on the front of the house that will make it look like a house, not open to the street. <laughs> it's gonna be all walled in. From the front, you won't know there's a pool up here. So this is the beam for the cabana. This entire wall is open to the pool where you come in here to the kitchen, barbecue, and big screen TV and fireplace over there. So gosh, I'm stoked. We're getting close. You guys know the drill? Let's get back to work. <laughs> Beautiful day. We work down the stairs. This is not the steps. The steps you can kind of barely see in the wall there. But I'm just dropping the three-quarter board down as I go. And since the stairs spiral around the wall, round wall, everything is cut to curve. So all these planks are slightly pie-shaped. Get closer. All right, guys, we got a 
big day in two days. I finally get to pour 50 more yards of concrete up on top of this pool deck. And now I've got all the hot pipes run. You can see coming into one little crawl space room. And I realized I have a big storm coming. We're tight on time. I had planned on hooking all this up, but I gotta tell you what, it's a lot of work. And Ken right here hooked up with me on Facebook because I put a picture of these red pipes and he said, hey, if you need a hand, hit me up. So I hit him up because I got two days to tie all this in because I want to heat my concrete while it's being poured. I have heat, 500,000 BTU torches blowing, heating the area under my entire pool. I've got it tended, so I've got heat coming up from below. Of course, I'll blanket it, but it's cold, it's winter. I'd feel a lot better if we went ahead and fired up with these all tied in to the pool deck. And then Ken brought a 400,000 BTU trailer over. We're hooking up the propane and we can run the system just like it would be run in the house. Slightly lower flow, but just putting enough heat, make sure it stays warm, a nice slow cure. All right, that's it. So that steady, steady beat right there is just level off the laser. And what I'm doing is making it really easy for the concrete guys. I'm setting aluminum tracks that go two inches in to a six and a half inch slab. It's approximately a third the way down into the concrete slab, which means several things. One, I'm using a bolt top and bottom because I glued in some bolts into the concrete. You can't move them at all. And then I got a nut top and bottom and it's so easy to set perfect grade because I can just spin the nut and lock the two together and pinch the aluminum track. Now that the track's there, it'll always stay there. It acts as a street guide so we can pull across to get level, but it also acts as the concrete cut joint. It's the exact depth I want, but I don't have to worry about someone accidentally going low or if the pipe was a quarter inch high and somebody cutting through our hot pipes. So we're doing all of the expansion joints in all the major areas with aluminum tracks. And we're setting all the slopes to this right here, which is our drain system. So this drain, we were able to set a laser and move it exactly the slope I wanted. It actually slopes multiple directions so that this slab will look almost perfectly flat. I've got multiple drains in it. And so it slopes from one way to a drain, slightly goes up to a, another high spot, down to another drain, up to another high spot, down to another drain. But as you look at the floor, it's gonna look perfectly flat. If I tried to slope it all one way, you'd really get a lot of gradient in the overall floor. So when this is done, it should look perfectly flat, but have multiple places for all the water to drain away from the pool and away from the cabana. All this will be a covered cabana, so I put the track just behind the overhang of the roof. So that is kind of where any snow that drifted in would be right on the drain track and it slopes multi-direction and then pavers will go right over the top of it and there'll be holes in the pavers. It'll be really easy if I ever had to clean it out, I can just put a hose flush down through the drilled holes and it will race to big two inch drains. Or if I really had a problem sometime down the road, I could just lift up a paper and shoot down the tracks to all the drains or clean out the drains. The drains will have primary access pavers strategically placed at every main drain because each drain will have a stainless grill that stops any big debris from going in. Now, to be clear, the holes going into this are gonna be relatively small. Anything that can fit through that hole could literally go all the way out the drain system and out the other end but we're still gonna put a grill, keep everything out of the pipe. We got a lot more to do. We're pouring concrete tomorrow. This is a ton of work. I'm excited. Let's get back to work. Right here, you can see got bolted tracks. The concrete actually slopes both left from this aluminum track and to the right. The left side is the covered porch that looks out to the front yard, so the concrete needs to slope off the porch. And then from the right side of this rail you see here, concrete slopes towards the main drain. 
which is that two by four. The pool slopes to that main drain. When the two by four comes out, that's the drain track. right there those aluminum rails stay in and that is my saw joint that i don't have to put in later my perfect fractured point Couldn't be happier, it went absolutely perfect. It's amazing. It's 30 degrees outside right now. And my concrete is holding almost exactly 70 everywhere. I could not be happier. All right, another one of my middle of the night checks on my concrete. That's steam coming off. Well, a little bit of my breath. There's my breath. The steam's coming off. Let's see how our concrete's doing. 72.8, absolutely perfect. That's a lot better. It's getting close to 80 and I want to keep it closer to 70. So check it again in a couple more hours. Get some sleep, get back to work. Pulling off the blankets for the day, let this moisture escape. It's 18 degrees right now. The temperature is going to get to 41 this afternoon. So we're going to let this air out. I'm leaving the heat turned on both under the slab and on our little furnace out there, a boiler, it's hitting the glycol inside the slab. So we'll keep the temperature around 65 to 70 on the surface all day. And we'll cover it up again tonight. We'll do that, repeat it for an entire week. We really let this cure out. And then we'll slowly turn the temperature down to match the outside temperature and we'll be finished. All right, guys, it's a great day. I'm down to my last giant pour. Today's actually a baby pour. We're only doing 20 yards today. We did just shy of 50 yards yesterday, 48 and a half. And last night, I got up every two hours to check the temperature of the concrete. And for the first couple times I checked it, I was making minor heat adjustments both under the deck, because I've got five torches going under there couple outside and then I've got the radiant heat temporary trailer pipe and heat through all this red pipe I want to keep it as close to 65 to 70 as possible by the time I got to 4 in the morning it was really stabilized and I was able to crash and get up here at 7 to do this last batch of concrete all right guys I feel like a big lazy slacker all the prep work and now I'm just hanging out, handing tools and watching. So it's kind of nice. I'm just enjoying it. But a lot of you have asked on the video, how many yards of concrete so far? So prior to pouring this slab, I was at about 750. We did almost 50 yesterday, 20 more here. Takes us to about 820. 820 is the total count of what we've delivered to the job, but we're always sending away a half a yard to a yard or two depending on the size of pour and the extra but 820 yards 
to the job to date. We'll probably break. We've probably got about 80 more to go between all the driveways and everything else, but I think we'll be roughly 900 yards all in. We'll see. <laughs> Back to work. Actually, right now, I'm just going to hang out, hand tools to these guys, maybe bring them a lemonade. I don't know. <laughs> Back to work. <laughs> so happy. <laughs> the concrete's done. Get back to work on the pool.